And for you folk that are online with us this morning, um, turn with us as well to Colossians 1, 3 to 14. And for you that may be listening to this audio after the event or looking at this on YouTube, we just want to make mention that we have uh, load shedding currently. We are running a generator, but we do not obviously have all the lighting that we would normally have. So if you're looking at the video this morning and it is um, not quite uh, what you would normally be used to in terms of the lighting, we do apologize for that. And so I hope that the lighting is going to be sufficient here for me to read the scriptures this morning, but nonetheless, we will get through there. Now, I've got my, my, my cell phone here ready to shine, to shine the, the light if necessary, but we'll shine the light of God's word no matter what. We'll, we'll do that. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 14. Read along with me, please. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit, and it doth also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth, as ye also learned of Epaphras. Our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause, we also thank, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and we didn't know about the load shedding when we but has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins father god we thank you for the truth of your word this morning and as we gather around your word may you edify us and teach us what you would have us to know we give you thanks and praise by christ jesus amen Okay, I did not know it was going to be load shedding until that scripture. And I must say, when I read it again now, going through the last night, it didn't quite remind me of that, but it, the power of darkness, but nonetheless. Thank you. Jen, can you just turn that, that box just a little bit, just to give me a bit? No, no, no. Turn, no. Just. There we go. Just giving me a bit of light. Thank you. There we go. Now I can see. We're using the projector for light this morning. All right, please bear with us, folks, but let's get into the study of God's word. We give thanks. Paul, the apostle, writes to the Colossians and says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying, notice, always for you. We've done a five-part series on prayer these last few weeks in our Bible studies, and if you would like to get the audios of that, we don't have the, the video clips, but the audio clips we do have of that, and we considered a number of scriptures. I just took the folk through a number of scriptures in, in terms of prayer and how we should be praying and continuously praying. You know, when Paul the pray, apostle says praying always. Now think about that. I mean, is he walking around muttering and, and praying wherever he goes? No, that's not what he's saying. But every occurrence, every time there is something that he's, he's mindful of, he's thinking of the Colossians, he's thinking of the Thessalonians, whoever he may be thinking of, he, he's, he's thinking of the challenges or whatever it may be. He's praying. He's giving thanks. He's giving God thanks. He's saying, praying always for you. Notice verse four, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. So Paul is writing to the Colossians here and he's commending them. And he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. But now notice verse five, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. There is something that is laid up for you and I in heaven. And as we move into this time of Christmas, and as you will no doubt already have seen and heard with regard to the music that is playing in the shops and the folks that are already uh, out there shopping and wanting to buy gifts and so forth. 
our mindset needs to be one, I believe, of looking and understanding what the real true value and the meaning of what God's gift is to us. And Paul the Apostle writes, and he says to the Colossians, for the hope, notice, which is laid up for you in heaven. So there is a hope which is laid up for us in heaven. Now, that hope is not a hope and a possibly and a maybe. You know, when we were looking and we looked at the schedule, we get the notification <clears throat> pardon me, of, of when the load shedding is going to be. And as we looked at the load shedding, when the, the notification came through, the first thing I did was look and say, okay, the church is going to be, I can't say the church is going to be in darkness, but the church hall is going to be in darkness. We are in the light. We are in the light of God's word, right? So you may be sitting a little bit in darkness here this morning. Um, and we've got as many of the curtains open to give us, to give us light, but we are in the light of God's word. And when we look at it, Paul saying for the hope, which is laid up for you in heaven, do you know that there is something that God has for you so totally secure in heaven? that nothing can take it away from you. Just go with me for a moment. It's not in your notes. I know that. But as I was going through this again, um, I, I made a note here. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. You can just write next to that verse, Ephesians 1, 3. Uh, let me read it to you here, where Paul is talking to the Colossians about this hope which is laid up for us in heaven. Well, what is this hope? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, as Paul the apostle writes here to the, the church at Ephesus, and he, he puts it this way to the church at Ephesus. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So there is something, if Paul says to the Colossians that there is a hope which is laid up for you in heaven, there is something secure for you in heaven, he says to the Ephesians, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. What's your hope? You are blessed with all spiritual blessings, but notice, in Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has secured a hope for you, which it cannot be removed. You and I as believers, as we believe and trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and as we hold on to those promises, there is something which is absolutely, totally secure. And there are you folk that online I know, and you folk here sitting here, and I just, as I look across, who recently have lost loved ones. And you think about that, and you think, now, you know, what is this life about? And yet there is a hope that was laid up for our loved ones who they think about what they're experiencing. I mean, there is no gift this Christmas that you can even think of giving or getting that they haven't already received. Think about that. And that they are already, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I get excited. My wife moans at me because she says, I, I'm like one of those. I get the gift. And I say, but can't I just give it now? I mean, really? I mean, and no, no, but can't we just give it now? You know, um, we, we sent something to my daughter and son-in-law in, in, in Australia and, uh, you know, hope we sent it early, hoping it's going to get there before Christmas and so forth. And many of you already know that um, Michelle and I, well, we're going to be grandparents in, in March, around about the beginning, first week in March. And so we've sent something off and we were hoping. And so we've, we're have tracking this parcel. And yesterday in, in chatting to, to them, I'm like, you're in the parcel. You're going to get, and Michelle's going, Shh. <laughs> There is a hope. Now, folks, I'm, I'm hoping that that parcel gets there in time. I'm hoping that it doesn't go missing. But is there a guarantee? I mean, really, have I got an absolute 100% guarantee? No, I don't. Uh, do I, but do I hope that through the system, you know, it, it's, it's going to get there? Yes. But when Paul the Apostle talks about a hope, when he comes to the Colossians and in Scripture, you know, we must be careful. One of the things I've noticed over the years is so often we take what we know the words to mean today and we define Scripture based on that. What we need to understand is allow scripture to define the word fully. Now, I no one understand that the words that we have today mean often the same thing. But sometimes we, we, we talk about a hope and we're so used to that when we say, well, I hope so. That in actual fact, our mindset is what? It may or may not be, right? So now when we come to the scriptures and we read this word hope, our mindset must not be that which, well, I hope so. I, I, I hope maybe mm, I, I'm not sure it's there is a hope 
that is laid up for you in heaven. Why? Look at the title of my message, Strengthened with All Might, because the hope that is laid up for you this morning is laid up for you in and through and by Christ Jesus, who took upon himself to take on physical human form. And coming to this world as a babe, come through the whole process of birth. We've said this to you over and over and over. His birth was normal and natural as any other birth. His conception was miraculous. And we need to know that through the miraculous conception of the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I have someone who is not tainted with the sin of mankind. And so the hope that is laid up for us is laid up for us by Christ Jesus, who came into humanity through the process of how a child would be born, growing up and going through that whole process. And yet he was faithful. Now, look, let's, let's just read on. And it says this, where have you have heard before? Notice in the word of truth of the gospel, the word gospel means good news which is come unto you as it is in all the world. Now notice, so Paul's giving thanks, he's praising the Colossians, and he's saying this word, this gospel has come unto you, but notice what the word of God has done. Notice what the gospel, the good news has done. It bringeth forth what? Fruit, as it doth also in you. You can write next to that verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, right next to that verse. Why? Because Paul writes to the Thessalonian believers and he says, it's the word of God which effectually worketh in you also who believe. So it's God's word that is going to work in you, that is going to give you the promise and the hope which is laid up for you. So as we go through the challenges of life, let me just say, these last two weeks for me personally have been challenging. Really, um, we have dealt with families, numerous families who have lost loved ones and, 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 and in tragic circumstances the last two or three weeks. And, it, you know, each time we deal with the families and you see the trauma they're going through and you, you're there for them and you're helping them and, and you, 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 you're bringing the, the truth of God's word. But you see the trauma. I met with the one family and the lady looked at me and I said, do you have any questions for me? Is there anything I can help you with in terms of what we're planning for the, for the funeral? And we were sitting in a coffee shop. And as we were sitting there, she looked at me and she said, yes, I have a question. So I'm thinking, okay, you, we're going to talk about how we're going to do something because I've now gone through how we're doing the funeral. And we've chatted about the hope we have. And, and she looked at me and she looked at me and she just said, why the suffering? I mean, here I am. My mindset is, okay, we're planning the funeral. We're going through everything. And she looked, why did my mother have to suffer? Why? It was a bittersweet for me these last number of weeks because we have been able to, like with Garth, I mean, been able to go into the hospital in, in a limited number and be there where before the last year and a bit, it, it, that has not been possible, where we haven't even been able to be there for the family in the hospital next to the loved one that is, that is, that is leaving this broken world. And this particular lady that we dealt with, her mom, within a number of months, just rapidly went down and her health waned. And as we were standing there in the hospital, and as we met this family, we gave them the truth of God's word. We encouraged them. They are believers. And I could, it was so encouraging for me to be able to bring them the word. And yet in their humanity, in their emotional time, in the time that they are facing the greatest challenge, losing a loved one, we have questions. And that's normal. That's natural. It's natural to go through that. And as we've gone through all of these things and, and we've dealt with this and, you, you know, you look at this and you say, how am I supposed to cope? Now, I can give you a whole talk this morning and really fire you up and get your emotions going, right? And you're going to leave here and what's going to happen? Just like if I carry on preaching, that generator at some point in time is going to run out of fuel. <laughs> By the way, if you're online and you hear a motor car engine running in the background, that's the generator. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so uh, I can preach as long as the fuel lasts. <laughs> I'm not sure how long that is. But the point of the matter is at some point in time, right, if I leave that generator on, what's going to happen if I don't refuel it? It's going to run out of fuel, right? And what's going to happen? Well, hopefully by that time, the power will be back on. But the point is, nothing is eternal and everlasting in this, in this physical world. There's always something. So our mindset is, okay, so our loved one has passed away. This has happened. So now what? Well, if we know that you and I are strengthened with all of God's might, that there is a loving God, a, a God who is almighty God, a God who demands justice, who has every right to come to humanity and pour out his wrath upon us, has decided to be a loving father. And through the plan what, that God had is to bring a place and a, and, 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 and a point to us where through a place on earth, our Lord and Savior was born. Physically. Where he left the portals of heaven. He left the comforts of heaven to come to earth. To take on physical form. So I, I want us this Christmas as we lead into this. And as people talk about, oh, you know, it's Christmas and Jesus is born. Have in your mind the power of almighty God. The power of a loving, kind, caring, compassionate father. And be strengthened with all might. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the hope that is laid up for us. I mean, when I look at all of these things, that's how I cope. I look and say, you know what, Lord? I know that no matter what I'm facing, you're with me. I know that. How do I know that? Through the truth of God's word. And that's why when Paul talks about here to the Colossians, he says, and bringeth forth fruit and doth also in you since the day that you heard of it and knew the grace of God. Notice, in truth. Please look at that. That's not, oh, by the grace of God, but it's the grace of God in truth. What truth? The truth of God's word. We need to have scripture that we can turn to that can comfort us in our time of need. That when we're going through what we're going through, when things are great, you know, if, 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 you, if you happen to, I mean, I was chatting to, to one fellow the other day and he says, my business has never done so, so great in all the years that I've been operating. And I said, fantastic. That's wonderful, but don't put your faith and trust in that. You, you follow that? I mean, even, it's not just when things are going bad that we need to trust the Lord. It's even when things are going great because then our mindset can be, oh, I've got this and everything's right. No, no, hang on a minute. It can change in a moment. And we need to be mindful of that and we need to celebrate and be thankful for what we have. Paul writes and he says, he's learned to be a base. That means to be humbled or brought low or to abound. That word abound means overflowing overflowing i was busy filling up the generator just before the service and i thought man i'm going to put as much fuel in here as i possibly can and as i was watching this and, and getting the, the fuel and eventually it got right to the top and i still had a little bit of fuel in the in the jerry can and i thought now what well i couldn't put it in because if i did it would be abounding it would be overflowing right so when Paul talks about the abounding hope that we have, it's more than you need. The enemy, though, wants to detract you and distract you and take you away from that and for you not to see the hope that is laid up for you in heaven. The hope that has laid up for you in heaven because heaven itself came down in the form and bodily shape of the Lord Jesus Christ, who took on human form. And that's the mindset we need to have through this Christmas, through all of the hype, through all of the stuff that's happening. Keep your focus on that, the hope that is laid up for you. Look at verse 7 of Colossians 1. Uh, yes, Colossians 1, verse 7. And ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Notice that. He's saying to the Colossians, who is Epaphras? Epaphras was a minister, a pastor. So Paul's saying, he's a faithful minister. He's a faithful pastor. What do you think Epaphras was doing? Bringing the truth of God's word, bringing the hope that these Colossians had. 
And notice, he says, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. And notice, Paul is saying to the Colossians, I've heard of the love that you have for each other. I've heard of the care that you have for each other. He knows that God's word is working in them. God, remember, God's word was not complete by the time he's writing to the Colossians. I mean, Paul is writing to the Colossians, right? It's part of the word of God, which is being completed. So how did they get the word? Well, through those who were, had apostolic authority and who were teaching what they needed these folks to know. And as Paul is, think about this, he's writing to the Colossians and he's saying, you're trusting the scripture. Well, what are they reading? They're reading a letter, right? From Paul. But what are they actually reading? Scripture. You follow that? I mean, the first time the Colossians read the letter from the Apostle Paul. What are they reading, folks? This is not just some letter. It is a letter penned and written by the Apostle Paul. Now, I know Paul got sometimes had scribes writing and he would dictate. But it was Paul's letter that he's writing to these Colossians. He's commending them. You and I read a letter that was written almost 2,000 years ago. And the very first time that those Colossian believers read it, they were reading scripture. When you and I read it this morning, what are we reading? A letter? Yes. Paul's writings? Yes. God inspired. God preserved. Why? So that you and I can read today and know that we have a hope which is laid up for us in heaven, that no matter what we face in this life, no matter how we go through issues and challenges, no matter how good it gets, no matter what our circumstances, we do not look at our circumstances to determine our standing with God. That we don't look and say, okay, things are going great, so God must love me. Or things are not going so great, so maybe God has something against me. Have you ever thought about what the scriptures say? Paul writes to the Romans and he says, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Who do, who do you think that who is? Satan. Trying to keep you away from the truth of God's word. And as we look at this reading in Colossians this morning, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm really focusing and delving in this, and, but I want you to get this. I want you to see, you know, we're talking about it is Christmas, but why do we celebrate? Because if it wasn't for the fact that Christ Jesus came to earth, was born into this world as a babe, went through life perfect in every way, honored God, his father God, fulfilled the law, did what was needed to, done, you, to do, you and I would have no hope. No hope. Interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing, right? So we've got the generator going. We fill it up. So I say to Jen, let's get a backup plan. Just go and fill this jerry can again. We're not running out of fuel, right? So the mindset is we go to the filling station to get more fuel. Can anybody tell me what the issue would be? We cannot go to a filling station near us. They don't have power. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we are. We've pulled the generator up. It's full. I'm saying, I'm not taking chances. Go and get us some more fuel. We can't. So we've got to take a trip down to an area in town which has power. I was wondering... I wonder why she's taking so long. You follow what I'm trying to say? When we try and rely on our own ability to make plans, guys, it's, it's, it's fickle at, at, at best. Really, honestly and truly. And so as we look at this and we look at the fact that we are strengthened with all might and there is a hope that is laid up for us, our mindset needs to be, I can weather the storm. I can go through the storm because Father God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to face the greatest storm in his life. And that is to come and live a perfect life, but to end with the greatest battle on the cross of Calvary. And where Satan believed he'd won that battle, 
it in fact lost. That's why we have this hope that is laid up for us. Let's read on. Now notice Paul says in verse 9, let me just read it again from the, from the, the beginning. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge, notice, of his will. But don't stop reading. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So I heard somebody say, you know, if you pray to the Lord, the Holy Spirit is just going to prompt you. How? No, well, the Holy Spirit will just guide you. How? No, well, you'll get a feeling. Really? Is that how I must base my understanding of God's word? That if, that, that if I'm praying to the Lord and I get a feeling? That that's the Holy Spirit talking to me? Is that what God's word says? No. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, study. What must I study? Study the word of God. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine, for reproof, correction and instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Folks, God, our Father, is not going to speak to you through some kind of emotional whim today. I'm sorry, but he just does not do that. The Holy Spirit is going to prompt you. The Holy Spirit is going to guide you through the word of God. You follow that? And you are not going to find in Scripture whether you must... Go down this road or that road, or you must buy this car, that car, this. That's a decision it is given to you to make. But Father God, through his word, using the Holy Spirit that lives within you, is going to prompt you through the word of God. So where do you need to be spending your time? Trying to figure out your emotions? Or reading God's word? Because even when we're feeling absolutely down, feeling drained, feeling at a point where we just don't know where to turn, the truth and the reality is there is a hope that is laid up for me in heaven. There is a promise that God is with me no matter how I'm feeling. And that I'm never alone. That's how we get through this world. You see, when we try and whip up emotion, it may work for a short period of time. But it ain't going to work long. And so that's what we need to be mindful of. And that's where Paul says that you will be filled with all knowledge of his will, which you get in God's word and spiritual understanding. Now notice verse 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So when we take God's word, we trust God's word. We thank the Lord for sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate the fact that Christ Jesus came in as a babe. He lived a perfect life. He was then offered as a sacrifice for your soul and mine. And we believe and we trust that. We are strengthened with all of the might of God. Look at verse 11. Strengthened with all might. How are we strengthened with all might? According to his glorious power. You see that? Unto now, so when you strengthen with all the might of God, you strengthen with the word of God. How is the strength going to work? Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now, hang on a minute. So, Lord, you're not going to take all these things away from me. Lord, I'm going to strengthen you through my word. I'm going to strengthen you through the Holy Spirit living within you, through you taking the word, through you knowing and understanding that I am with you. I think when I read that, I think of the scripture where Paul writes and he says three times he prayed that the Lord would remove the thorn from his flesh. And I believe that thorn was Satan really buffeting, you know, Paul, uh, if you read the life of Paul, boy, oh boy, let me tell you something. I just read it and I get, and I, and I, and I get tired and I think, ah, would I be able to deal with that kind of stuff? I mean, Paul writes and he says that he despaired even of life, right? So, I mean, he got to that point. How did he carry on? Strengthened with all might. How? With all patience and long suffering. 
But notice, with joyfulness. So that's not, oh Lord, I'm so patient. Oh Lord, I'm suffering here. Lord, I'm long suffering, I'm suffering. But I'm going to be patient, Lord. Yeah. It says with joyfulness. Now, joyfulness means that sometimes you may not be smiling because you're going to be so emotionally drained, but you can rejoice. That you are strengthened with all might, with the power of Almighty God, the power of Almighty God who has every right to take vengeance upon man right now, but who has chosen to pour out his grace, his mirth, mercy, mercy. <laughs> His mercy. <laughs> Why? Because he's a loving, compassionate father who decided to place that wrath that he was going to place upon mankind, upon his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. He's going to come back to earth. Before he does, he's going to come. He's going to catch us away, the church, the body of Christ. We're going to be taken out of here the ambassadors of Christ, before God declares his wrath and his war upon this earth, you and I as believers, if we're still alive at the time, will be taken out of here. And then there will be a time of tribulation that this world will go through, the nation of Israel will go through, and then the Lord Jesus Christ will come down and set foot again on the Mount of Olives and judge and pour out his wrath. Christ is going to do that. But you and I right now, we are living in an age where God is giving grace, mercy, and peace. Now, let me ask you, is the world giving grace, mercy, and peace? No. Just this past few weeks, I had to deal with young folk who, are, who we have to try and get into a safer situation. And you hear the trauma and you hear all the things going along. And it's easy to be sucked in and drawn away and say, but where is the hope in this world? Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in his word. Our trust is in his word. Why? Because we can be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Notice verse 12, giving thanks unto the father Notice, which hath made us meet to be to partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And that power of darkness is the darkness that Satan and his satanic policy of evil has brought into this world. Where we, as, as a lost humanity, justify our actions to be right when they are totally contrary to God's word. And that's what we need to be mindful of. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Now, let me ask you, if God's word says you've been delivered from the power of darkness, right? Have you or have you not been delivered from the power of darkness? Yes, you have. But you're still here. So why? Why then are you here if God says, I'm going to deliver you from the power of darkness? Well, Lord, you know, I accept Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for me. Thank you, Lord. You know, woohoo, I'm out of here. Can I go home now? The Lord says, no. I'm with you. Why? Notice, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translate, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Why do we have that? Why are we doing that? Why? Because verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Why? Being fruitful in every good work. That's what God wants. You want to know what God's will is for your life? God's will is for your life that you trust him, that you trust the power of his might, that you trust the indwelling Holy Spirit who lives within you. You take God's word, you let it empower you, and you live your life in the honor of and the glory of what Father God has done for you, and you reach out and you be part of the light that is shining into this broken world. And that's why we're here. And this Christmas, as people will begin to talk this, about this and the hype, let us make that our focus. Now, 
I don't know how much fuel we got left in the generator. So I'm going to end now. And next week we'll pick up on that. Because there's a lot more scripture I want to share with you. And share with you and show you how Christ Jesus came to do his father's will. But I would rather just end this here now and say, you are the saints, the ambassadors. You are sons of God, heirs of God, allowed to be on this earth, in this broken world. Let us bring the light. Let us bring the hope. Let us live out the hope. Let us live out the truth of God's word in this broken world. We're going to sing a song now. And I hope that as we do that, it will succinctly bring what I'm trying to share with you. It's all I once held dear. So thank you for your attention. And um, take what we've sh shared with you. Go and read through the scripture again. Read and look at it. And just for yourself, consider the word of God. And next week, we'll pick up on this again, how Christ Jesus came to do his father's will. Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for your love, your care, your grace, grace and your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would guide us through your word and that you would bring us to a place and a point of understanding what you would have us to know, not because we have some kind of emotion and we think that you are speaking to us in that way, but that we objectively take your word, read your word, believe your word, trust your word, and make choices and decisions in our lives based on that. And even when we make the mistakes we make, even though we may make so-called wrong choices, we live in the hope, we live in the trust, that we are held with the power of your might, with the power of your love, because you are our Father, our Heavenly Father, who loves us beyond measure, who sent his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to complete and accomplish what we never could do. We thank you for this, in and through Christ Jesus. Amen.